This is how I strap my copter down when I need to do testing with the props on. So I've got here some bungees, and these bungees are just the right length to go very snugly around my desk. I've got it up on a cardboard box uh, because I f raising it up gives the bungees just a little more pressure on the arms. I've got the bungees around the outside of the arms so they get more leverage. If they were in near the frame, they would have less leverage and the copter would be more likely to be able to sort of pick itself up. And then I've got the USB cable attached so I can work with the computer and I'm passing the USB cable underneath one of the feet so it stays in place while the props are spinning and doesn't get nicked. And that is about uh, the best I think you can do in order to do this as safely as possible. Now, why am I actually doing this? At the end of my last tuning session, this copter started dropping out of the air. It always dropped the same direction. It dropped to the front left, which suggests that, that it's the same ESC having the problem or motor having the problem. And uh, So I'm going to take this as an opportunity to walk you through the troubleshoot of a, well, a lot of people would call it a desync, but any sort of scenario where your copter is flying and then all of a sudden it just tumbles out of the air uh, because a motor or an ESC has stopped working. Anytime your copter tumbles out of the air, the first thing to do is to ask yourself, did I have a fail safe? Did I have a power failure? Okay, so we want to rule out other things that could cause it to drop out of the air. You'll know if you had a fail safe because the copter will not rearm after you, it, it lands. So it'll land. If you have a buzzer, it'll be beeping. It'll either be beeping SOS or, or I'm not sure what the other pattern is, but I believe it used to beep SOS. And it will not rearm until you power cycle it. And that's a dead giveaway that you've had a fail safe. So then you got to look at your receiver and your receiver cable and all that stuff. If you had a power failure, then you should hear one or all of the ESCs give their startup tones. Now that probably will not be audible to you, but if you review the high def footage, then it may be audible. And this again is one of the reasons why having a high def camera or a microphone can be really useful from a troubleshooting perspective. So your copter tumbled out of the air, you did not have a fail safe, and you did not hear your ESCs reset. So that is starting to indicate that you may have an ESC or a motor having a problem. Of course, you can go to black box and you can confirm that a motor went to full throttle while the copter was moving against the motor and that verifies that a motor has stopped making thrust. The next thing to do is to figure out whether the problem is between the ESC and the motor or between the flight controller and the ESC. And the way to do that is to go to the motors tab and spin the motors up. Because in the motors tab, the PID loop is not active at all. You're just sending raw PWM values to the motors. And so if there's a problem between the motor and the ESC, you will still have problems when you're working with the motors tab. But if there is a problem between the flight controller and the ESC, that problem will go away when you're working with the motors tab. Now don't skimp on strapping your battery down because it's on the bench. You never know what's gonna happen when the props are flying. Definitely make this flight ready and hope it doesn't come to that. I'm just gonna slowly spin that motor up and make sure I don't run into any problems. Okay, the problem I meant to be looking for was a scenario where the arm started to lift or the copter started to shake, any indication that the copter was not fully secure to the table. But what actually happened was, when I stepped up the throttle signal, the motor started to twitch. So I was slowly moving it up, and it was spooling up slowly, and then I got a little tired of waiting, and I hit page up to make it spool up faster, and it started to twitch. So, we definitely have a problem between the ESC and the motor. 100%. This is not a tuning issue. This is not a bad motor header on the flight controller. None of those things. There's some kind of a timing or synchronization issue between the ESC and the motor. Anytime you have the problem with, when controlled by the motors tab, that's what that indicates. A, a safety note. While you're doing this, the home key will put the motor to full. The end key will put the motor to zero and the page up and page down keys will step the motor up and down in chunks of something like maybe 50 microseconds. So you can just click on the slider one time, use the up arrow to spool up slowly, use page up to spool up quickly, and end is your safety key, end will shut it down immediately. So whenever doing these tests, I always 
have my finger on the end key in case anything starts to go wrong. Now let's see if there's a consistent spot where it has a problem. Now I was at about 1300 last time. See, it's doing it already. There. I didn't do that. Do you see it drop out? There's definitely an issue. Now the motor is cool and the ESC is cool, so we don't have an overheating problem. Something is up. Let's try one of the other motors and see if it has the same problem. I don't think so because I never had that problem in flight. I'm going to do motor number two because it's furthest away from me. Yeah, no problem. So let's break down some of the ways that this could have come out. If the motor spools up smoothly from the motors tab, but it's dropping out of the sky in the air, then probably you've got some kind of an issue maybe with your, with your throttle signal or your motor header. One thing you can do is you can use a custom mix to move the motor to a different motor header, and that'll rule out if you have maybe bad solder on the motor header or something like that. A test that you should perform is you should take the motor rapidly from low to high. Now I'm not going to do that right now because I've already identified the problem. I know that the ESC is having an issue and I don't want to stress it out any more than it already is. Also it's kind of terrifying to do that when it's only a foot from your head and so I won't do it just for the sake of demonstrating it to you. But if you have a, a motor that is dropping out of the sky, it spools up slowly with no problem. The next step is to jump it around rapidly because you can have sync problems that don't come out until you jump the throttle around rapidly. Any problems like that that come out on the motors tab indicate that you have an issue between the ESC and the motor. So what kind of things can you do? You can play with the motor timing, you can play with the DMAG prevention, and you can play with the startup power. Frankly, I'd be really surprised if timing and DMAG were an issue as well, because again, the, the simplest thing the motor can do is can idle, and if it can't even idle, it's just hard to imagine we're getting any kind of desync or DMAG problem under such, such simple and non-demanding flight conditions. So, then what is this point? Well, I, maybe we have a bad ESC. This is a fundamental enough problem that it could be a bad ESC. Um, maybe I screwed up the soldering somewhere. I'm going to pull this tape off and check the soldering. Joshua from the future here to tell you that the issue turned out to be with the motor, not the ESC, and the issue was that there was a broken winding. Uh, one of the three windings, uh, one of the three phases had broken where the motor wire goes into the windings. So the, um, the enamel wire uh, that is made to wrap the poles, the actual windings, is typically soldered to a piece of silicon wire that then exits the motor and that's what you actually use as your motor wires. The silicon wire is much more flexible and durable than the enamel wire. Uh, and I don't know if it broke at the solder joint or where, but it was broken. I don't think that the motor was broken from the factory because the copter flew fine uh, for several flights. And I think it was maybe just marginal or something. I did not take any hard crashes or anything that would have damaged the motor in any way. I think the motor was just, just barely hanging on from the factory, and then after a few flights, it just finally gave out. When I finally inspected the motor, like really up close, after it just on the bench during this testing, just started just completely dropping out, not even being willing to keep spinning, I noticed that the poles were actually wiggling. They were wiggling back and forth if you wiggled the motor wires where they came out of the motor. So that's not good. And then when I pulled it apart, I saw that there was a broken, uh, a broken winding or broken uh, lead going into one of, the, one of the phases. Anyway, that's the answer. It was a defective motor. For now, though, there's not a lot more I can show you. So we're going to call this one. Hope it's been educational. Happy flying.